Welcome to another episode of the 3D Experience Platform Explained series. Today we'll be taking a quick look at the 3D Experience Platform and taking a very close look at the SOLIDWORKS 3D Experience PLM services. First of all, when we look at the platform, we can set up these tabs. I've set up a couple of tabs here, different uh, information on the different tabs, totally customizable. Add in as uh, much information as you want, different widgets, uh, different tabs do different things. And then over here we have the compass and the compass contains a lot of different uh, apps. Here we've got the marketplace, here we've got roles. I've got a lot of roles here and the roles come with some apps which provide functionality to the role. The compass is divided into four quadrants. Here we've got all our 3D programs, our virtual programs such as Simulia, Delmia and so on. And here information, NetVibes, uh, Exalead, uh, analytics and so on. And this is the Innovia, the data management side of things. So all these apps are related to Innovia. We can very easily add a new tab here. I'm just going to add a tab and name it product engineering. So this is going to be like a product engineer. It'll have apps related to that. And we'll take one of those apps. I've added into my favorites here, uh, the product structure editor. It's actually two widgets that come along together. On the left, we're going to have the product structure. And on the right, we're going to have the graphics. And they both interact with each other. It's, it's one of the only widgets that actually comes with two parts to it. And um, very useful. We're going to use this a lot, actually, to show um, what's going on here on the platform. Let's do a search. This is a very quick, easy Google type search. We get some results. We can filter them with the 6W tags over here. A little more on that later on. And I'm just going to take this and drag and drop it into my product explorer, product structure editor in this case. And now um, this is an assembly I put together previously, um, very random. It's got the structure here. Uh, we can see here that it's sprinkler with some bushings that have been added in and so on. And there's interaction between the two sides of this uh, widget. So I select in the graphics. I can uh, filter and uh, start selecting parts, uh, sub-assemblies, assemblies all the way up and so on. And that selects also on the left side in the tree. And then, of course, vice versa, I can come here, I can select something and I can say, show me what's that, uh, what I selected in the graphics or zoom in on it and so on. So uh, two, two widgets just interacting with each other here. So let's take a quick look at the 6W tags. We've got all the attributes here that came along with these. And what we're looking here is where the source CAD was. And we can see here there's actually three CADs involved in this assembly. There's some CATIA V5, CATIA Solid, uh, there's some solid work, CATIA 3D experience. And there's actually some uh, other information here that came from uh, 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 X Design, just shows up as um, uh, 3D experience here. So we can see that this is assembly that's made up of parts and sub-assemblies from different types of CAD. And it, it, it really, the system doesn't care where it was created. It'll bring it into here. And uh, uh, once it's in here, it uh, can actually come from anywhere and it can be manipulated. Let's open this assembly in um, CATIA 3D experience. We can see here, assembly gets loaded very quickly. And here's, this is a bushing. This bushing was actually created in CATIA 3D experience. And so we have the whole product def part definition here. And we can uh, dig into it and make changes to it. This one, though, uh, as we saw before, came from SOLIDWORKS. And we um, have the full definition here, but uh, we can't actually edit it here because it needs to be edited in SOLIDWORKS. It's here for reference. You can see that it comes from SOLIDWORKS. It's actually in a release state, so we can't really do anything with it. Here's, here's another bushing. This one, uh, we see that little red mark next to it. That little red mark actually means that uh, we can't edit it. Um, and the reason is that it was created in CATIA v5. So even though this is in work, uh, it's here just for reference. We see, but we get the whole assembly. We can design in context. Uh, there's a lot of things we can do. So um, whether I'm loading in CATIA 3D Experience or SOLIDWORKS, it doesn't really matter. So coming back to the platform, uh, let's just clear the view here. And I'm going to take a uh, design review here. So I created this one earlier. I'm just going to drag uh, a version of the sprinkler in here. And uh, this is generally what would happen in design teams. They'd create design review. This is a very nice tool for doing that. I'm going to come here to the review tab and I'm going to open a markup. I've got one I saved here. 
we can see that we have these different views, these different slides which being created to highlight a problem. We can turn parts on and off, change their colors, uh, add callouts, different text, different graphics. So a very nice, easy way to create a design review session and then share it with other people. So coming back to our product engineering tab, let's just uh, pull this out, resize it, make it a little, a little nicer. We can uh, do another search here. We'll go search for the orbital sprinkler. I'm going to take a new version I just created of this and I'm going to drag and drop it in over here. And really, we're going to have a look now at how we create that uh, multi-part assembly from different uh, sources. Uh, looking at the 6W tags, we can very quickly see the state of uh, the completion state of this, um, of this assembly by looking at the maturity states. If I click here, I can graph it. There's bar graph, uh, pie chart, so on, and we can color it based upon the release date. And if I expand, let's just select up here and expand the assembly, I'm going to get more information. So I can see there's actually some release parts here. There, the base of the sprinkler is released. So uh, quite a bit in work, and there's some uh, frozen parts here. And so on, those uh, life cycle states. So we can get a clear idea of how complete is this assembly from an engineering perspective. So I want to actually do some work here on the base. We can see that uh, the assembly of the base is in work and these the, the children are actually uh, are released and that's a normal type situation. So I'm going to select uh, the base here and I actually want to create a new revision of it because I need to make some changes based upon my design review. So we have this uh, option here to give it a, a new name even as we create the new revision. I'm just going to change this, say update it so we, we, we can easily see what this is. Okay, And we can take out the default configuration and we don't really need that. And we click OK and it creates a new revision. And it, it doesn't put it in our assembly yet because maybe we don't want it in the assembly. Okay, but what it does do, if I refresh here, is it shows us that the current version is it's not current it's not the newest. There's actually a newer version of this, so it's not the last version. So if I want to put the new version of the base in my assembly here, all I have to do is uh, come here and say replace by latest revision. And it will do it for me very nicely, very quick, very efficient. There we go. So we got D.1, and I bet you that D.1 now is in work. Yeah. Yep, there it is, in work, and it's the last revision. So I, as a product engineer or as an engineer, I've kind of I've prepared this assembly for some changes, created some new revisions, and later on the designer will take a look at it. So let's go and bring in those bushings to show you how we did this. It's very easy, actually. So we do a search. Let's uh, let's take this one. And this one uh, originally came for Katia V5, if I'm not mistaken. But just drag and drop it into context. And in fact, I can create my own virtual assemblies here and drag and build the assemblies out of uh, parts, that, no matter where they came from, Autodesk, uh, NX, uh, it doesn't matter. We don't don't really care where it comes from. All right, let's zoom in. There's some nice tools here for positioning as well. And the positioning is actually maintained uh, when we go over to the CAD. So if we load this in any CAD system, it's going to remember the positioning uh, of where I put those parts. It's very powerful as a digital mock-up tool. Let's drag this little widget over here. We can rotate the part and we can pull it out. It's it, it's accurate enough, but we might want a CAD assembly really to uh, open it in CAD to really position it and mate it and so on. And we, can, we can do that. So we see here the different, there's Katia V5, Katia 3D Experience, X Design, whatever it is. Doesn't matter where it came from. Okay. Once again, we can uh, see the different CADs now superimposed on the assembly and can tell us maybe supplier parts came from a certain, uh, coming from a certain supply and so on. Okay, let's close that out. Um, now, I just want to take a quick look here, this collaborative tasks. I'll go into this a little bit later, but uh, I've got a task assigned to me here, 
which uh, I need to complete and it's updated uh, for the, the sprinkler. And I just wanted to show you it here on the platform. And I'm, I'm going over to SolidWorks now. Inside SolidWorks, I've got the same platform. So if I'm a designer, I work in SolidWorks and here's my task and I'll have a number of tasks that I need to perform. I can filter them, do all sorts of things with them. I can open it and see exactly what's the work that I need to do. I don't need to leave SolidWorks to see this information. It's the same information that we saw on the platform. And here they've added the attachment of the sprinkler. I'm just going to open it straight from the, straight from the task. So I've got this list of tasks, list of things that I need to do today or this week or whenever. And inside SolidWorks, I can, um, I can access all the information I really need to do that work. So it's it's loading the uh, the tree here. This came from uh, this is already saved into the platform. I want to just nip back over to my collaborative tasks here. Um, got a big list here, so let's filter it. Uh, view by, come on, view by, and say it just assigned to me. And I'm just going to drag and drop this into the in-progress. And this will tell anybody else who's working on this uh, or looking at uh, the task or part of a project uh, uh, that I'm actually working on this task now. It's in progress. So we can see here that um, e even here, we can see this isn't the latest revision. There's that little plus there. So I'm going to switch this to the latest revision, which was just created. So I'm going to do this get revision. And here's all the available revisions of this part. I'm going to select this one, which is currently in work and load it into my assembly. So now I have the top level assembly, the sub assembly and the part currently in work. I'm going to select all three and I'm actually going to put a lock on it so no one else changes them while I'm working on this. I could leave the assemblies unlocked and then lock them later on when I want to make the actual change to the assembly. But uh, really, I'm just going to make a change here to the part and notice the tree as I make those changes. OK, so the tree on the right, notice it's changing. So as changes happen here, it recognizes that. And it says, well, hang on, I'm not up to date with what's going on on the platform. Something's changed, so uh, we need to update those. So uh, I've just made a very simple change. I'm going to save this up to the platform. And SolidWorks kind of understands what I'm doing, and it tells me, uh, this has changed, this has changed, you want to create a new revision, all the information about what's going on here has, uh, is available and uh, different revision information and so on. So, yeah, it looks good. Let's save it up. It does that. And it should refresh the tree once this is saved. And uh, we'll see that uh, an updated status there. And it is. Everything is updated in the platform now and saved. And now, for all intents and purposes, I don't need these locked anymore. I can unlock them, make them available to other people who want to make uh, changes to the uh, assembly. Last thing I want to do here is uh, change the status of my task uh, because I've completed it. I just drag and drop that over and say done. And then I move on to my next task, never having to leave SolidWorks. Let's go back to the platform. And we can instantly see here that um, the platform gets updated automatically. It's, uh, it's pushed. So it's always up to date. So anyone looking at this will see that uh, or tracking these tasks will see that. Um, once again, if I go back to the product engineering. This should have been refreshed as well. And we can see that uh, the part is in, is in work. This is D.1. So I can come here as a product engineer or chief engineer, whatever, and I can say, all right, I'm ready to release that now. OK, maybe it needs to go through some other approval, but uh, that gets updated very quickly. And this assembly now has that release part in that new updated part. OK. So uh, let's look at the properties of this. We can see that uh, everything's up to date. We see where this came from, the configuration in SOLIDWORKS, the, with the CAD, the, the origin, even though that doesn't really matter. We can even edit the attributes here and update them. Let's look at the history of this part since it's got several different revisions now. And we can see the revisions here. We can dig into them. There's a lot of things we can do from here. We can see exactly what happened between revisions, how they were changed and so on. And directly from here, I've got a lot of lifecycle uh, capabilities 
that I can perform on the part. Uh, I want uh, one of the things here, collaboration, I can change owner of the part, lock it and so on. Uh, I want to look at the Relational Explorer. This is uh, a, a very powerful tool, which is available from almost anywhere on the platform. And it really shows me the links between the assembly and its parts and well, not just the assembly and parts, but assemblies and projects and parts and projects and so on. And I can uh, navigate the assembly structure and uh, um, zoom into a specific assembly, see its links to drawings, to other information on the platform. And it's a very powerful tool to see where things come from, what, to, what they're linked to, what are the links and so on. So we can see here, we could link this straight to MBOM and see, or to um, uh, simulations or to manufacturing uh, plans and so on. Very, very powerful. So let's have a quick overview of what we can see here. There's some different uh, widgets I've set up here on the tabs. Here we've got the project Gantt chart, and this isn't just a view of the Gantt chart. This is actually, um, you can actually edit this. Uh, there's a lot of things we can do here. We can create dependencies between tasks and so on. Uh, we can do comparisons, planned versus actuals. Expand this, we can see you know, what happened, uh, where are we on the project? We can get a very accurate status out of that. Uh, so this is uh, really for a product, a project manager to come in here and uh, check the status of the project, uh, add in tasks and uh, see who's done their work and uh, what deliverables have been provided and so on. Um, over here, I've got the social aspect of the platform, and this is very important, actually. There's a lot of things that I can do in here. This is really unstructured data, and the way that unstructured data works is that uh, it really it fosters innovation because it's in an, an unstructured manner where we making posts and people are putting comments, creating ideas. We can see a lot of different ideas here that have been put into the system and people comment on those ideas and say, oh, that's great, but what about doing it this way? What about doing that? And, you know, you can, you have this um, exchange of ideas that can't happen in a more formal structured manner. Uh, I got different states here for the idea and I can uh, move an idea from state to state. These are totally customizable as well. So you, no need to go with the out of the box, uh, simplistic view we have here. Um, different people, obviously we can provide them with different, uh, uh, different uh, authorizations on the platform, on the, what can they post, what can't they post and so on. Uh, we can take a post here like this post and we can say, well, that's great. Let's transfer that to an idea. Maybe that's something we want to work on more or uh, collaborate around or ask uh, uh, for more information from our community of users or stakeholders or whoever. Another tab I've created here is a corporate uh, uh, dashboard uh, kind of got some uh, news feeds here, maybe our web page, some other widgets here. Uh, calculator and all of these actually uh, come from this information tab here so just these widgets like we can drag and drop them in put in our email put in some more web pages and make kind of make that a corporate uh, dashboard that everybody has I done something around documents here it's uh, nice maybe managing all my documents and we come back to the product engineering tab uh, let's have a look here. Let's just take another widget and just drag and drop it in. I, you know what? I'm going to take the 3D space one. That's a nice one. So we just take that, drag, drop it onto the canvas. And it doesn't matter really where we can drag it, it drop it. It's uh, resizable and we can move things around. Um, and this one really shows me my collaborative spaces that I'm, I have access to and the content of those spaces. And really I can use this to drag and drop information into my uh, 3D Compose or Product Structure Edit or any other widget here. Um, so, so this has been a very short overview of the platform, a little focus on SOLIDWORKS. Um, and thank you, thank you for listening.